DJ Ferris. Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. Hit me. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up the. Let's get a sports talk. So happy to be talking NBA and happy to have our analyst Tim Legler with us here on Sports Center. Tim, Giannis picks up right where he left off for the Bucks against the Celtics. 36 points, 15 rebounds for the Greek Freak. Doesn't look like it's taken much for him to pick up right where he left off. What stood out from his game? Well, I saw vintage Giannis throughout most of this game. And I, I, he shows you the difficulty of trying to prepare on such short notice in the restart for a guy like Giannis because when he gets to operate in places on the floor that he really wants to operate, if you don't have perfect health and connection defensively, he's going to just gut you by getting in those seams. And you'll take a look here. Jason Tatum has him at the top of the key. That's what squared up pretty good. But he needs help on that elbow from Jalen Brown. And you can see Jalen That's why he draw him to that side. He thought he would help have Jalen Brown create a wall and put the basketball out of Giannis' hands, make someone else beat you, form that wall, take out of his hands. That's what he thought. When he, when he drove to the side, he saw that Jalen Brown was right there, but Jalen Brown didn't create that wall with him. And he got right into the lane for an easy layup. Brown stays home with the shooter. That gap in that seam is just too much, and Giannis is going to take those big strides, overwhelm you, and get to the rim. That was vintage Giannis. And then the new wrinkles, I love. Putting him in pick and roll, letting him set the screen at the top of the key so he's not the primary ball handler all the time. And then sealing and diving into the middle of the lane. Imagine a guy 6'11 with that kind of speed, strength, and those kind of hands. Now as your slip guy, catching the ball, getting to the rim, and finishing pretty easily. So you're right, he had great determination. And that show you effect of shooters on the floor have on teams. They're a good shooting team. You don't want to come off that man because you're afraid of leaving one of them shooters open and you want to stay attached to them. That's the fact of having people who can scratch the floor and it open up everything for a guy like Giannis to draw into the lane because the lane is open because he had everybody on the outside ready to shoot the basketball and now it's over everything up for him. And that will help him out. That's the fact of having shooters around him. Determination, intensity. I thought he played harder than anybody on the floor. A leader setting the tone for his team and how important this is to him and for the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, and just seeing him make those adjustments that you mentioned. Now, the Bucks face the Rockets tomorrow night at 8.30 Eastern on ABC. Speaking of Houston, they were down 7 to the Mavs with 45 seconds left in regulation, and they come away with a win in OT. What does that comeback say about this team, Tim? Well, I think for, look, for Houston, they're never out of a game, right, with all that firepower. You have James Harden and Russell Westbrook on your team and all that three-point shooting. You're never out of a game, but for the Dallas Mavericks, this is one that's going to hurt, and Rick Carlisle's going to lose sleep. Number one, just the number of points they gave up. But secondly, the way they close games. All yes. Missed free throws. That played a big part in that too. All Kerry had to do was hit two. Ball game. That come to part as well. Closing out as well. Play a part. It's how you close the game out. But them free throws will hurt them at the end of the game. You made one, and then ain't nobody look to box out Covington. Ain't nobody look to try to just grab him and foul him. You sit there watching Terry back. Right? That's another one. Offensively. And on a night... When Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic were sensational and they scored from all over the floor, you hate to see him settle the game by not getting stuff going to the paint and going at the rim. Instead, taking a lot of long jumpers. And this has been the M.O. for this team most of the year, and that's why they've lost so many close games. In that situation, against a team like Houston that is not a very good defensive team, you need to be more patient and attack and get something high quality. I felt like Dallas was really trying. They settled that's a small ball team. Pazinkas. 
You're like 7'3". Take advantage of that. No one can stop you in that small ball. You dominate the paint, and then you work yourself out. When you just settle, you play right into the small ball team hand, and that's what he did. They play right into, they play right into their hands and gave the game away to Houston. to let the clock run out rather than continuing to attack them in the paint and win the game. As a result, Houston stole it. They got some opportunistic uh, tippings off missed free throws, but for the most part, I thought Dallas really let Houston back in it with their inability to close the deal. It's something that Przingis and Doncic are going to have to work through if they want to be a legitimate threat in the West. And to your point, Tim, Rick Carlisle called this loss about as tough as it gets. Mavericks will play the Suns tomorrow night. That is our Tim Legler with us here on SportsCenter. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube.